Ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube universe, what is going on with you on this Thursday afternoon? It is Thursday, November 10th, 2022, uh, sometime in the afternoon. I am, of course, your always gracious host, Fallon from GoNootropics.com, coming at you with the Rain Energy Drink Chairs. Good to see you guys. We are cruising through on day four of the 30-day No Kratom Challenge that started uh, <clears throat> Monday, I believe Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We started this challenge on Monday, and by my estimation, in the 30-day No Kratom Challenge, we have just a handful of people this go-around in the Discord taking on the challenge. Uh, I was surprised. It seems like there were a few people, well, a lot of people actually that got a head start these people decided under their own will that they were going to quit kratom by themselves and so we've got a bunch of people who were already on their journey of quitting kratom in fact i had one guy message me saying you know it's time for another 30-day challenge he wanted to come off kratom and so we started the challenge there were people already doing the no kratom challenge and so now we started it there's a few new people that came in to start the challenge on on Monday, and here we are, day four. So what are what is going on, ladies and gentlemen, with day four? Seems like when people quit kratom, uh, they they want like a day by day. Like, what does each day look like? How does day one compare to say day number two, day number three, day number four? What's it look like after 15 days? of of withdrawing from kratom you know what's it look like after 30 days and i could give you my experience everybody is going to have their own experience i kind of feel like i'm flogging a dead horse a little bit here because this is like my third or fourth rodeo coming off of kratom being on kratom for a while and then coming off this uh is my largest go at kratom this is the longest duration that i've been on kratom I've been on Kratom for just probably just over a year. I want to say just over a year. I've been taking Kratom fairly consistently. So today is day number four. And I would have to say that this could be perhaps the hardest go I've had at, at coming off of Kratom. Uh, in the past, like this time, for example, I'm not really getting too many cravings. In the past, I've... Uh, in my shorter stints of using Kratom, I developed these really intense cravings to use the Kratom, you know, on, especially on days like two, two through five, just a very intense urge in the past to, to take the Kratom. Now I'm not really, I'm not really craving the, the Kratom as much as I did in the past, but the physical withdrawal symptoms, I would say are worse this go around, uh, especially at night. During the day, I would say I'm okay. I'm taking a few supplements that I believe are helping me on, on this path. <clears throat> DLPA, for one, L-DOPA. Uh, you know, and at night, I'll take some GABA. I'll take some, you know, relaxing tea, passion flower, uh, kava tea, things like that to kind of help me sleep. But at night is the worst because that's when the, the phantom enters into your legs it's the ghost the ghost of the kraken enters your legs and at night it's just this feeling of general bodily discomfort and and tingling it's like there is something under the skin something like just underneath the surface that that can't find rest it, it's like a ghost that's trying to find a home and the ghost can't find a home so it's like inhabiting your legs and just a, a very restless physical feeling in, in the body, which is rather annoying at night, prevents me from falling asleep. Once I fall asleep, I pretty much sleep through the night. But getting to sleep has been has been a challenge, especially uh, last night, which was day number three. Last night was particularly challenging to go to sleep, to fall asleep. And just dealing with the, the restless legs and overall bodily discomfort. And it's like a tingling in the legs. It's like a ghost inhabits my legs at night. 
And uh, this time, like even in my arms and even throughout my whole body, I'm just feeling these unpleasant sensations as the Kraken leaves my body. And when I took that two-week break, maybe a month or so ago, I took a two-week break. Uh, these feelings, they went away over time. But even like towards the end of the two weeks, I was still getting some subtle symptoms of, of these restless legs. And then, of course, I got back on the Kratom. So now I'm curious to really figure out like how long is this going to last, baby? How long are these restless legs going to last? How long are these symptoms going to last? And I'm going to find that out because I am done taking the Kratom. I'm done. <clears throat> and the goal is just to never take Kratom again. I'm going to do what I did with alcohol and just say, you know what? I've uh, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, had a good time, you know, but it's time to move on. So we're going to see. I'm in this for the long haul. I know a lot of you guys are in it for the long haul. Uh, I don't know a lot of your guys' plans on, you know, are you just going to do the 30 days, then go back to it? Or are you really planning on coming off for life? Because those are two different long-term plans that you could take with Kratom. It's one thing to just say, you know what, I'm going to do it for the 30 days. But it's another to say you're going to come off for life. Uh, the latter presents a certain subset of uh, challenges that just aren't present if you're just coming off for a brief period in time. You know, coming off of anything long-term you're going to have like different phases. Like you're going to have the, of course, the acute phase in the first, you know, week, couple weeks where the acute withdrawal symptoms are really rearing their ugly heads, you know, and you're going to get through those and you're, you're going to reach these milestones in the withdrawal process. And then eventually the physical symptoms go away and you're left with kind of the psychological symptoms that kind of make you want to take the Kratom. Uh, the reasons why you probably started taking the Kratom in the first place, certain psychological reasons. Uh, work is stressful. Your life is stressful. You have kids. You have a wife, kids, uh, work. Uh, you know, you're in financial straits or <laughs> there could be any number of reasons under the sun, certain traumas that you've had that kind of cause you to take Kratom and cause you to numb out and kind of put you into a place where you want to escape and then you start you know justifying it's been a month maybe even a few months maybe even a year you've been off kratom and to this day all i've been off of alcohol for three years and to this day every once in a while sometimes every once in a while sometimes every once in a while i will get these cravings to go out and drink even after three years of, of being sober off of alcohol, I will still from time to time get, get these cravings. So my recommendation is if you're younger and you've, you haven't tried Kratom, you haven't tried any of these drugs, if I could go back in time, man, I, wouldn't, I would never touch this stuff if I knew what I know now, you know? But that's the thing of it. It's just you experience it. You really don't listen to people when they tell you these things, especially when you're younger. I didn't care. I didn't care what my parents were telling me. I didn't care what these older people were telling me about drugs and alcohol and, and all these things. It's, it's just one of those things where you just got to learn the hard way. Sometimes that's the way it is. You, you learn the hard way. And then over time, you start to realize the people who are older are much wiser than you. And as you get older you start to kind of learn from other people's mistakes. You know, now I search out the mistakes of others because now I know uh, it's just a lot easier not to do things the hard way. And so if I was younger, I'd have never touched the weed. I would have never touched a lot of these things, the phenobut. I would have never touched any of it. Even the nootropics, uh, I would probably never touch. And that includes the paracetam. That includes all these other, other things, you know. I'm sure I've done some damage to my brain. Taking all of these things, and, and that's probably why I gravitated towards the nootropics in the first place. Just really, uh, all those chemicals just being pumped into a developing brain. 
and then kind of life hitting you and then all these traumatizing events kind of happening to you and it's like next thing you know you're in your your mid-20s you're approaching your 30s and you don't have these coping skills you've been medicating your whole life you don't have the coping skills and now you're trying to come off all this stuff you don't have the right foundation in place to deal with the challenges that life throws at you and so you relapse you you relapse to numb out because you can't handle it you can't handle the truth you can't handle the shit sandwich you know the shit sandwich it's always going to be something that we have to eat a lot of us use kratom uh <clears throat> because there's a shit sandwich that we seem to have to eat every day it's going to a job you hate maybe being lonely you know just just name it everybody has a shit sandwich that that they gotta eat and no matter who it is pick anyone rich famous wealth uh attractive women in their life successful marriage or whatever you want to call it they got a shit sandwich to eat too and you, th you think you solve one problem in your life you finally finish the one shit sandwich that you got in front of you and you realize that well life just gives you another one to eat it's like shit sandwich after shit sandwich and yeah certain shit sandwiches taste worse than others but i i really don't know like i look back when i was homeless and the mind adapts like you think being homeless is like the worst possible outcome you could have but you'd be surprised at how you deal with that psychologically how quick you adapt and the pain you experience is, is really no different than the pain somebody who is not homeless would experience uh you know with them dealing with something else you know the rich have to deal with people taking their money people taking advantage of them uh getting divorced and, and going through divorce courts it, it's all it's all the same shit sandwich it creates a lot of the similar uh pain in the brain pain in the body and the mind adapts uh, and what i know for sure is there's always going to be a shit sandwich to eat while we're here while we're here in the flesh there, there's just no way around it you got to eat the shit sandwich and learn to eat it this is a coping skill you got to learn. Uh, learning to be bored, not needing to reach for a substance in order to feel good, being okay with being bored and not having these constant hits of dopamine, just, just being okay with that. And I think if you can be okay with being bored, uh, you're, you're going to get a lot of value out of, you know, things that should be pleasurable, pleasurable to the human experience like certain things that you know we're so bombarded with all these crazy videos on social media and all these people doing these great things and you watch those videos every day and the next thing you know is it's like life just doesn't seem that exciting you know when you're watching these people do all accomplish all these great things and accomplishing all these these great feats and these really far out videos of of people uh you know doing these types of things then your own life becomes kind of boring <laughs> and you start you start spiraling out of control you're not getting pleasure out of normal things that in the past uh, before the internet before social media people found pleasure in like something as basic as you know going out to dinner like with your family or something uh, it used to be like a pleasurable thing that people found pleasure in now it's like we're so inundated with greatness online we're so inundated with this constant excitement online it's like these normal events that are supposed to bring us pleasure just aren't doing it anymore you got any kind of pornography you could possibly want out there that you could go out and watch well what's that doing to your own sex life you're not even enjoying your own sex life anymore because look at what you're watching Look at what you're watching. Your brain is fried. Your brain is fried. And then you add on a substance abuse problem on, on top of that. And you're just slowly becoming mentally ill. You're becoming mentally ill. You're needing more substances. The Kratom's not doing it anymore. And at least for me, I found that 
after a year, the Kratom is like not really doing much for me anymore and kind of inducing a type of depression inside of me that even taking larger amounts really isn't resolving. So it was time for me to come off. It is day number four of the 30 day no Kratom challenge. It's called the 30 day no Kratom challenge. I'm coming off for good. That's the plan. And I would say right now, it's mostly the restless legs, the RLS at night, and the phantom limbs. Uh, feeling kind of fluish, uh, feeling like cold-like symptoms during the day a little bit. No psychological symptoms to really speak of. I hear people, uh, they're experiencing enhanced anxiety, uh, deeper depression when they come off of Kratom. I don't really, I don't get that too much. Certainly, certainly a bit. But you know... I think I was so depressed on the Kratom, it's like coming off it, it, for me, I guess it just couldn't get any worse <laughs> than what I was already feeling. So my psychological state, I feel, is actually getting better because I was taking the Kratom and it was actually creating a lot of anxiety. It was creating a lot of anxiety. It was creating a lot of depression. So coming off of it, I feel like it, it really couldn't get much worse than that. So as it's leaving my system, my mental state is actually getting better. I'm getting calmer. I'm getting more stable. But certainly at night, the physical symptoms are there. They're annoying. Are they the worst thing in the world? No, they're not the worst thing in the world. They're very annoying, but <clears throat> at least personally, I feel that I could power through this and really not resort to going back to the Kratom. So this is day number four. If you want to follow the challengers, we have, uh, we have a separate section in the Discord for people doing the challenge. Uh, if maybe you're not doing the challenge, you just want to come by and just witness the carnage, right? That's what people want nowadays. They just want to have a safe distance and just kind of look at the carnage. Look at what people are going through. You know, maybe you're thinking of coming off a of Kratom, but you really don't know the landscape or how it, how it's going to turn out. Uh, just look at the people and the conversations that we have in the Discord and, you know, watch videos like this. Watch a lot of videos. You know, I've been watching a lot of Kratom withdrawal videos. And there's a lot of people that admittedly are having a rough go. I've noticed the people having the roughest go seem to be older, you know, because, of course, as you get older... Uh, your body's not going to recover as fast as it could if you're younger. So a lot of the real horror stories are coming from people who are older, trying to come off a of Kratom and Godspeed to them. Uh, but the younger you are, of course, the easier it's going to be to come off of a substance. It's just your body is more capable. You know, if you're in your early 20s, uh, even up to your your late 20s, early 30s, you know, if you're a healthy guy or a healthy person in your 30s, uh, you'll you'll deal with some symptoms, of course. But I, I think if you're healthy, a lot of the symptoms are going to be manageable. And a lot of the really terrible stories you hear, you look at the person and you could see that, well, they, they've got other health problems. They've got other health problems that they're overweight. You could just see it. You could see it in them. They're, they're not a healthy person to begin with. They were probably unhealthy before they started taking the Kratom. They're dealing with other stuff. So your mileage is going to vary. Your experience is going to vary depending on a lot of different variables. How long you've been taking the Kratom, how much, your state of health, how healthy you are. You know, the difference between somebody who's been taking Kratom for five years versus somebody who's been taking it for one year is probably going to be a lot different, you know. So it's really something you got to look at and say, you know what, yeah, it, it could be hard, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it to come off a of Kratom. And just be prepared if you're coming off of this long term to, to, deal, with, to deal with all those triggers and deal with the reasons why you started taking the Kratom in the first place. You know, the, the traumas, the deep-rooted traumas <clears throat> that are embedded in you. And, you know, you watch these videos about people, you know, getting over depression, getting over these traumas. And it's hard. It's hard because I really think these traumas are deeply hardwired. They're, they're like 
<coughs> excuse me, deeply hardwired traumas that something happened to you and you, you're upset. You know, you're upset. You, you don't have any mental peace because of these traumas. And there are certain things that uh, maybe you disassociated from the thing and you're miserable and there's these external stimuli that happen in your day-to-day -day life that trigger you. And all of a sudden you're feeling upset and you're feeling like, like you don't know what's going on and, and you're feeling sad, depressed, and, and things like this. This is like an unconscious trauma that got buried. Maybe you don't even know what it is. You know, just imagine all the shit that happened in your childhood. Some of these things happened and, and you're aware that they happened, but a lot of things happened and you probably disassociated you don't know you did but it's somewhere in your subconscious right it, it's somewhere but if you spend time thinking about it you spend time thinking about the past uh you could kind of root them out to a certain degree and i think becoming aware of what that thing is is a big step of, of progress if you at the bare minimum become aware of the thing and you look yourself in the mirror and you say, you know what, this is it. And you face the shame or whatever it was that happens. You face it head on. You face the wolf head on. And when you face the wolf and you, and you look the wolf right into the eyes and you don't look away, well, that's going to that's gonna disempower that wolf. That's going to disempower that particular trauma that you've had. And that's going to go a long way in coming off of a substance because these are the reasons you use and if you don't face that wolf head on and process it and deal with it, it's just, you know, what are your odds of winning? What are, what are your odds of winning if you don't peel back the onion, if you don't peel back the layers, deal with these traumas? And I think they're, they're hardwired, baby. I know they're hardwired. I was just recently in a car accident. I would say it was a mild car accident. <clears throat> uh, me and my girlfriend were at a red light and the light turned green and I was pulling through the intersection and a guy speeding ran the red and T-boned us. Just just T-boned us. I want to say it maybe 40, 45 miles an hour. He was going pretty fast for the zone. He was trying to get past the yellow. And, you know, in, in the moment, things kind of slowed down. I was calm enough to kind of get myself together, get out of the car and get us both off of the streets and talk to the cops and talk to the guy. But now I'm noticing every time I go through an intersection, I feel the impact. I feel the impact. It's like something hard, hard wired that I can't just override. It's there. It's like this hard wired thing now. And, and so, you know, we have all these things that have happened to us that are hardwired and they're, they're popping up. They're, they're popping up randomly. You have waves of, you don't know why all of a sudden you're, you're feeling bad or you're feeling like a, you're in a fear state or something like that. And if you want to get off a substance, you have to face those things and learn to process it and learn to go through life without this fear, without this fear and this anxiety. And if you can peel back the layers and fix some of these things, well, you're going to feel a lot better. You're going to feel natural, which I think at the end of the day, we all want to feel. We all want to feel natural, a natural feeling of good, not this synthetic, uh, constantly emotional roller coaster, up and down feeling that these substances give us. So is it a hard road to hoe? Certainly. But is it impossible? I don't think so. I don't think so. So if you want to take part in the challenge, you want to jump in, you know, four days late to the game, feel free. I'm going to link you guys to the Discord below. Once again, FallonGoNootropics.com. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'll keep you updated on our progress, and I will see you very soon. Peace.